So a couple of weeks ago, we showed this screenshot here that you can see on the Raspberry Pi of this AC amp meter. And that's showing power consumption, but on the AC side. So I thought I'd do a little bit of a video of how we got to that stage. Now, there's a couple of things I just want to say straight from the start. Obviously, this involves AC power. So if you don't know a little bit about that, you don't need to know a lot. But if you don't know a little bit about that, just stop at this point. It's very dangerous. You could hurt yourself. Um, and I don't want anyone to proceed with this project if they don't know some of the basics. So as part of this video, I'm not going to show myself connecting this little device to the AC live wire. So if you don't know where that is, this, this one isn't for you. If you do know where that is, then stay tuned and we'll show you how to get this set up. What we're doing here to get this information is we're using one of these little um, power clamps. Now you sometimes see these on the end of, of meters. Uh, where you can kind of clip round a wire and you can take a reading. It's the same kind of technology. So inside here, there's a little kind of transformer and some magnet. As the current goes through this little device, through this clamp, it generates, in this case, a voltage. Now, some of these generate a current and some generate a voltage. The one that we're working with generates a voltage. And you can see, hopefully just on the front of there, this one is from um, YHDC. Um, so you can have a bit of a Google, uh, and these are the, the clamp meters. The reason why that's important is we'll come on to in just a second, but this particular model's quite good. It's got it's got some things that I didn't quite kind of realize right from the, the get-go um, as to something that I actually needed. But yeah, so this one is from YHDC. And as the current passes across, so if this is the live wire, and it's going through there and you clamp that on, as the current passes backwards and forwards over here, it generates a voltage in this case, and the little ESP reads that voltage and converts it into something that we can use, and that's how we then get to the AC amp value here. Now, there's a couple of little things you need to know about these things. If you buy a cheap one of these, um, it might not have either a blocking diode or, or a burden resistor. Now, I didn't know about that at the very start of this. Now, the burden resistor, that is there to make sure that this doesn't kind of get out of control and so is the diode. So on the one that measure, measures um, amps, generates an amp output, it has a burden resistor and that's important so that you don't get a little bit of a shock from it. Um, this one has a diode built in. So again, if you unclamp this while it's working or, or this somehow gets disconnected, then what can happen is the little transformer in there can build up quite a high voltage and give you a little bit of a shock. So they're two things that you do need to kind of understand and be aware of. So you're looking for one that either has a burden resistor built in or you add it on, or it has a blocking diode built into it so that you don't get that um, runaway kind of voltage going on and get a little bit of a shock from it. This particular brand has that built in, so there's no concern. It, it's, it's relatively safe. As I say, you're still dealing with AC, so you still need to consider that, um, but it's relatively safe and you're not going to cut any wires connecting this up. So as I say, what happens is, clamp this on, it starts measuring the current, so as the, the power is going backwards and forwards through there, that then generates voltage. We then do a calculation on the ESP, and we turn that into a value that we can understand. Now, we did try and do this with the Raspberry Pi. However, around to a little bit of difficulty. Two reasons. First of all, it's not receiving the data fast enough. It's not... Um, because we're on AC power, so we're doing that check every 50 milliseconds in the UK because we're on 50 hertz, so 50 cycles per second of the AC power. So the Raspberry Pi unfortunately doesn't check that often enough to get this calculation working and, and, and monitor the curve correctly. So I've had to use an ESP. Um, I'm going to carry on using this for now, but I am going to try and go back a step and get it working on the Raspberry Pi because I don't really want another ESP on board just for this. It's also using one of these um, ADS1115 ADC analog to digital breakout boards. And the reason it's using that is because that's a lot more accurate than what's already built into the ESP. The Raspberry Pi doesn't have any analog um, options on it. So that's the reason I originally bought the board. But actually, it's better to use it with the ESP because the ESP also isn't that accurate when it's measuring um, voltages and things. So if you've got one of the breakout boards, I would recommend that. That's just converting everything to I2C. So that's quite a familiar button. It's very easy to set up on the Raspberry Pi. Um, it's also quite easy to set up on here as well. The other thing to say is that it's using an Arduino sketch. So this actually isn't running natively in 
um, Sense ESP. It's running um, originally from an Arduino sketch that's been converted, and I'll also show you how to do that. Now, I do believe you can convert virtually any sketch that you want to. However, I've, I've not really done a lot of that, so I've actually uh, managed to convert this across. But there are a few steps and a few guides that you can follow on the Sense ESP website on how to do that. So just quickly show you it working. And then what we'll do is we'll backtrack and we'll go through the steps. We'll explain all of the kit. We'll go through the code, how we got from here to over here to put it on the ESP and then how we got it to connect to Signal K. So hopefully you can see at the moment there that the gauge is actually bobbing around a little bit. Um, and that's because the AC clamp is currently attached to the house is incoming supply. So we are measuring the power coming into the house. Now I've got to be careful here because obviously we have an 80 amp um, breaker in our house so we can quite easily exceed the specifications of the little clamp um, but as you can see there's not a lot of stuff on at the moment we've got ca kind of good control no one's going to put anything that's going to use a lot of power and if we measure this properly using a, a sort of a, a home uh, unit we we're getting the same sort of figure so it, it's roughly around the same sort of draw that's it in action um, and what we'll do now is we'll backtrack right the way through because it's just talking to Signal K and it's just sending that data in. But what we'll do is we'll backtrack now and we'll run through the code and, and set this up properly so you can see exactly how it's working. So step number one was obviously to get this running. And this isn't my code. So I took the code off the internet. I'll, I'll post a quick link in the description of where the code came from. And I think they borrowed it from somebody else. But this is the code essentially in an Arduino sketch. The video talked through a couple of the um, factors and multipliers here. And as you can see here, there's a few things already set. So this factor is set, and that's to um, allow us to do 20 amps at 1 volt. And that's what my CT clamp works at. So at 20 amps, it would measure 1 volt. And that's something to do with this power multiplier as well. So the other thing that you had to do is you had to set the gain to 4. And that's to do with how many volts it's going to take or the range of volts that it's going to use. So it's never going to exceed 1 volt. So we make it more accurate by upping the gain. If your device generates more than 1 volt, then you've obviously got to make a, an allowance for that and turn the gain factor down. But it, that's to do with the resolution. So it then goes through the code, basically, and it does the calculation. Here's the calculation that I couldn't actually get the uh, Raspberry Pi to do. And it's a root mean squared calculation. So it's constantly checking the um, incoming voltage because, as I said, it's AC. So it's checking that sine wave and then it's converting it to something that we can actually use. And that's the code there. So... I dropped that onto the board and made sure that first of all it would actually work and it did and it basically just printed out the value of what we're actually getting through the clamp and that's the measurement that we're getting. Then it was a case of starting the process to convert it and change it into an ESP because obviously this won't talk to Signal K because it's got no parameters in there and it's got no other bits and bobs to actually send that data across. There's no paths or anything. So we then needed to go through the process of converting it. So the first thing I'll do now is I'll show you the same code in Visual Studio and, and the output that I saw. So here at the bottom of the terminal, you can see the output. I was just here measuring my laptop, I think it was at the time, and you can see that the data is slowly coming through, and that's just from the very basic sketch. So now what we'll do is we'll go through and have a look at what we need to do in the code to make the changes. So the first thing you need to do is download a blank sketch. Get that from the Sense ESP website, and then you want to edit a few of the parameters, and you can see here we've had to include the digital converter library and also a bus.io to actually load the bus. We've also altered the monitor speed, and now we start to call those in the code, and you can see here we called the SPI one, because that threw an error, so I didn't expect to have to put that. At the start, we've already called the analog to digital converter. So this would now compile in the Visual Studio code. It actually compiled fine on the Arduino side in the IDE sketch, but it didn't compile in Visual Studio code. Now it does, and it doesn't throw any errors. So that was the starting point to then start moving forwards and actually moving things around. So if you head over to the Sense ESP website and you go to the tutorials part here, you'll actually see at the bottom of the tutorials you can do this mix and match, and that's exactly what we've done. So they take an example here of a sketch and they then move it from one type of code library to the other. That just adds in all the Signal K references so that it can actually work and it converts it across. You can see there, there's the example. And I basically used this trying to understand what was different between that and the code that I got to then make it work. 
So it goes through the various different examples of what you've got to do. You've got to start with this base template like I did. You've got to add any libraries that are missing. And then you've got to start calling different things. So this was one of the things that, that tripped me up, obviously trying to understand what pins mine used to talk to it, which was slightly different to the example. So I had to, to change those. And then it was a case of just manually adding bits and bobs until it worked. You have to move some of the code around a little bit. Um, and this example goes through what you need to do to do that. You then add in the signal K outputs. So how it's going to then turn that into a path. And then hopefully you'll get a completed code that looks something similar to this. You'll put it onto your uh, ESP and it will actually work. So we'll jump back now into Visual Studio Code and we'll go through the example. Okay, so here's the adapted code now. Um, and as you can see, there's, there's a few differences. So there is an ordering to which these uh, values and um, constant float parameters are set at the very start. So I had to move those up to the top. Um, this calculation had to be moved. So that also has to go to the very top. And you can see we've got this print values, which is very similar to the code on the Arduino side. Again, just had to move it around a little bit, following the guide that you've just seen uh, on the website, and then it starts to, to work and function as it would. Um, I had a little bit of trouble with this bit here. I had to change this and also um, add a few lines into here to get it to, to create it properly. So here's the this other uh, parameter that I, I had to set, and that then calls the output and puts it back in and then writes it to a value. So I think, let me just go back up a little bit. Yeah, there's my SK output float AC amp output, and that's the value that I'm then calling from here. So that took a little bit of a while to work out where that needed to go. I put that in several different places and eventually um, put it here and, and it started to work. So this is the end, the end result of the code. As I say, I had to modify these values because they're different on my board. So this is where the uh, SDA and the SCL inputs are. Um, I also had to call this SPI um, input because it generated an error right from the start. I'm not really sure why that happened, but that had to be in there. So then it runs through the code um, and it gets this value and it starts to generate what we need it to generate in terms of an output. So it's reading, this was another thing I had to work out. It actually does a differential calculation. Um, so it's using the differential outputs or inputs on the board rather than just um, receiving it to ground because obviously with that curve, the curve goes positive and negative with it being AC. Um, here it's obviously starting to talk to um, Sense ESP and the Sense ESP Builder app, telling it to call this and begin, start talking to the sensor, set the gain value, and then begin and, and then it starts to actually work and, and output the value that we need. So it's not a lot of code really, but the, the outcome is quite good. And as I say, I'll, I'll copy all of this so that you don't have to go through that pain of trying to convert it across. Um, but the example that we saw before was really helpful in trying to build it. And it was just a case of just understanding which bits I've missed to put it in there and then convert it across. So finally, a little bit of testing with a resistive type heater. So this should give us a fairly constant reading now. Let's give it a try and you'll see the power meter next door to it. So as you can see, that's on 750 watts. 1,250 watts. 1,250 And finally, 2,000 watts. Okay, and then just finally, here's the diagram of how the kit is actually connected together. So here we've got our ESP, we've got our ADS1115, and we've got the clamp on the end. So you can see we've got a ground and a positive here, a 3.3, so V in to 3.3, ground to ground, the SCL to the SCL wire or pin on the ESP, and the SDA to the SDA pin on here. So these, these numbers here, these are what we're actually using in the code. So for me, it's 21 and 22, these two numbers here. So you'll see that represented in the code. We move across a little bit. The On the sensor itself, we're actually using A0 and A1, not a ground. So that's where we get this differential value between these two. So we use A0 and A1, and I basically just had to cut the end off 
uh, the clamp. It doesn't actually use all three pins. There's just two wires in there coming out of the little transformer inside. So one of those is connected to A0 and the other one is connected to A1. And that's essentially it. That's how it's set up. So why have I gone to the trouble of doing this? Well, a couple of reasons really. First of all, I now know a little bit more about how to convert things that are available out there on the internet in the Arduino land across to Signal K. So if I find something of interest that I want to convert, I can now have a go at actually converting it. So that was one of the reasons. Second reason is on the boat, you don't always have a lot of power to play with. So um, I can't, you kind of saw from the gauge that it only goes up to 16 amps. Well, we have a 16 amp breaker coming into our boat. And although you can kind of control the things that you turn on, some of the things that are running mostly in the background, such as battery chargers and water heaters, you don't really know when they're going to come on. So you could get into a situation where you get to the boat and you flick a couple of these things on and you don't actually know how much power you're consuming before you then turn on an appliance that you do know um, the, the current or the draw factor of. So it's a little bit of of one of those really it's just kind of understanding what we've got to play with and being able to monitor it the other thing is you can convert this now now we know that the power we could do some other conversions and work out watts we could work out probably cost and a few other things and i want to start playing with node red a little bit um, and i think i can use that to do some of those cost conversions so that's the end of the video. Um, I hope that's been helpful and I hope you've got something out of it. It's been a bit of a learning curve for myself. I hopefully I've explained what I've done quite clearly. Um, if I haven't, then drop me a, a comment um, and I'll try and do something else to, to improve that moving forwards. But yeah, it, it was a bit of a learning curve for myself and it's taken me a little while to actually get it to work because um, I came across a couple of errors as I was trying to build it. So yeah, if you've got any comments, get in touch. We'll see you next time.